In the last video, we talked about first dimension rights. And in this one, we're going to enter the second dimension. And this dimension is really interesting because it's one of a slightly newer set of, sort of human rights that we are discovering and creating and coming to better understand. And these are often called economic, social, and cultural rights. So economic, social, and cultural rights. Now if you remember from our first lesson and from the many lessons following that, these here are called positive rights. So that means that these are very much hands-on. This means in order to make these rights happen, people have to make them happen. And they have to happen in lots of different fields in this case. So over here you've got the economic, right here you've got the social, and over on the far right we have our cultural rights. Well, what would be examples of these different things? Well, if you take a look at something like economics rights, or sorry, economic rights, we're talking a lot in many cases about workers' rights. Talking about things like the right to work, or the right to take a break, or maybe the right to unionize, things like that. And a lot of it has to do with safety and participation in economic life, which makes sense. If you move into the social bit here in the center, you are getting into things like education, or maybe something like marriage. And maybe even talking about, on a more fundamental level, about literacy. Literacy. Which has a lot to do with the rights that we talked about in the last lesson. In order to pol pol participate in civ civil and political rights in a really meaningful and, and sort of proactive way, you need to be literate in modern society. So this is a very important point, this education and literacy perspective. And if you think about it, remember we were talking about how these rights are often seen as indivisible, you can see that these rights sort of bleed into each other. The rights to education and literacy, or to something like marriage, is not just something that's purely social, but also something that's cultural, and in most cases, also something that's economic, if you think about it hard enough. You also have to think about these things a little bit on sort of a scale because there are things like, for example, you know, education that crosses all of these. You also have things like maybe housing that also is kind of a little bit of both. It's economic. It's also social. It may even be cultural in some ways as well. Now moving over here to the cultural one, this is the probably the most unbroken ground or sort of the one that is least defined and solid at this point, because it is kind of a new way of thinking about rights. But one of the most important parts is the, cons like, see, the idea of participating in cultural life. And more specifically, really, in maybe your cultural life. So an example of this is that I, for example, grew up on an Indian reservation in the United States. And before I was born, um, there was a time when the Native Americans that I grew up with, that their grandparents were sent to schools where they were not allowed to wear their hair in their traditional style, or speak their traditional language, or wear their traditional clothes. And that is a very, very clear violation of their human rights, of not allowing them to participate in culture. So that's a very good example of that. There, But this is a very wide topic that fits many things inside of it, everything from participating in culture all the way up to things like copyright, for example. So there is a lot of space inside of each of these rights. There's also 
one clause that you sometimes you see a lot in the research is about benefiting from scientific research. So all of that is supposed to fit into cultural, the cultural perspective of this second dimension. Now there are a few interesting things that we found in the research to this that we'd like to share. One of them is that when you take a look at these economic rights over here, and particularly the rights of workers, that there's a very important sort of function that they, these rights pay, which is that of a bellwether, of how well a society or a country or an organization respects other rights. And a lot of times you'll see that when workers' rights are being respected, that all of these other rights and the ones in the previous lesson in the first dimension are being respected as well. Not necessarily all the time, and not necessarily always in the way that we would want them to be, but often it's a good sign when workers' rights are being respected. Now there's another very important thing here, and this is about the concept of, I guess, getting it done. Who are the people who are responsible for getting it done, and how does it get done? And that person you would call the agent. One of the biggest difficulties with implementing these economic, social, and cultural rights is deciding who is responsible for it. Because it takes a lot of time, these things are all quite big, and takes also quite a lot of money as well. You have something, for example, also fitting in here, probably, I'd maybe put it between social and economic somewhere, you have things like good health also fitting onto this scale. And to build something like a very good functioning healthcare system takes time, takes money, and it takes someone to do it. And there are a lot of societies in which no clear agent is willing to step up and do it without um, asking for a lot of money and resources. And there are lots of societies where both the time or the money or and the money are somehow missing or somehow not accounted for or not made available. So this is a very big thing. So a lot of times you will see that these rights are not binding, that they are taken as something to strive for, but that they don't have a legal status yet. And that is something that is changing right now. There's a big movement across the world to take these non-binding economic, social, and cultural rights and make them law. And that is a very interesting movement that really has slowly been underway since around World War II and something that's really been picking up speed in recent years. So that is a very basic introduction to economic, social, and cultural rights. We're going to move on from this into collective rights in the next lesson.